<laughs> we repping Wu Tang today, y'all. <laughs> Hey y'all, back with another video. Today is gonna be part two of what has turned into a series. I didn't plan for this to be a series, but as I sat down to kind of work things all out and figure out the best way to explain and describe everything, I'm like, yeah, this should be a series. So the first part was when we talked about density versus thickness. Today I'm gonna to talk about coarse hair versus fine hair. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing I want to emphasize is that when I'm saying coarse versus fine, and when you're talking about coarse hair versus fine hair, that is a reference to texture. So people use coarse the same way they use thick, and they're two different things. A person can have a strand of hair that's thin, and the texture of that thin strand can be coarse, or the texture of that thin strand can be fine. Coarseness is texture, fineness is texture. Neither of those have anything to do with the width of the strands of hair. So let's put that out there first. And then I'm gonna do the same way I did in the last video, which is just talk about each of these topics individually, and then I'm gonna do a comparison of the differences, and then I will tell you guys why it's important to know which category you fall into. First up, we're gonna talk about coarse hair. Hair that is coarse is kind of like uh, rough. So if you think about like, if this were the strand of hair, instead of it just being perfectly smooth, it would have grooves in it, it would have ridges in it, the hair might be a little bumpy on the surface. Um, that is coarse hair. If you think about like um, a gravel or a concrete road, if you took your hand and just gently went over it, you would feel those little grooves and ridges. So that is kind of how I could best describe coarse hair. Okay, fine hair is hair that is basically the opposite of coarse hair. So if you took that same single strand of hair, instead of finding ridges and grooves in it, you wouldn't find any of those things. The surface of the hair would be smooth, it would be all cohesive and together, and you would not feel any indentation. So if you wanna compare it to my last example, if you touched an asphalt you know, road, you would feel all those little grooves and bumps. If you took a piece of tile and ran your hand across it, that would best describe fine hair. So if you wanna think about it in those terms, that is really a visual that you can kinda of use to describe the differences. So running your hand over asphalt or running your hand over a piece of tile. Some of the characteristics of fine hair is what I'm gonna talk about first because I have fine hair, I know the most about it as far as personal experience goes, and so I can talk about that with a lot of ease, whereas coarse hair, my daughter has coarse hair, so I know about it, but it's still secondhand. So I'm not as well versed in it because that's not my hair type. So fine hair has a tendency to be limp. Like when I take my hair and I curl the it, the curl is not gonna just stay standing up without some help. So that help can be in the form of a holding product, uh, that help can be in the form of hairspray, that help can be in the form of me teasing my hair. Um, all of those things will help me to get a curl that stays where I put it, but my hair on its own will not stay. So like for instance, now as I'm growing the top out, when this gets to a certain length, and I take my hair, I could take a big barrel, um, curling iron and curl my hair. And you know, when you curl your hair, it sticks up like this at first. It goes, you know, you have a little curl. And if I filmed myself, you could sit here and you could watch it go from this to this, <laughs> because it's just, it's just gonna fall. Um, and I think that has to do with the fact that the strands don't have any resistance between them because they're smooth. So you have all these, you know, smooth pieces of hair next to one another. It's just gonna, everybody's just gonna meld together. So that's one of the characteristics of fine hair that I personally wish was different um, because it can be challenging to get your hair to do certain things. It's important to also know that when you're styling your own hair because there's certain styles you're not gonna be able to achieve at all and then there's other styles you're not gonna be able to achieve without some help, meaning product or otherwise. Okay, another characteristic of fine hair is that it's easier for you to pull that shine out of fine hair and get that uh, luster that so many people like. The reason is, 
And if you're a natural or have ever been natural or know anything about the natural hair community, you understand that light reflects off the surface of the hair. That's what creates shine and it's actually an illusion. It looks shiny. It's kind of like when you see, you know, uh, water. It looks shiny, but I mean, it's not actually shiny. It's a reflection of the light bouncing off of it. So the same thing applies to the strands of your hair. So when you have hair that's fine, there aren't many grooves in it. It's not rough. It's like that piece of tile again. So it's very easy for light to hit that and just bounce straight off. It's just like a straight shot because there's nothing in the way of light completely bouncing off of the entire length of the strand. So it doesn't mean that the hair is automatically shiny. It can be, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means that it's much easier for someone with fine hair to get that shine and then to get a high shine than it is for someone who has coarse hair. So in comparison, a person with coarse hair, think about it, they have grooves, they have ridges, they have all kind of little bumps and things going on on that surface. So if light comes down and it hits a spot on that hair where there's a groove or an indentation or the surface is not flat and perfectly smooth, the, the light is not going to bounce back off as easily because it's gotta go down and get all in that groove before it can come back up and it loses some of its effectiveness while it's down in that little groove. So you have to do different things if you have coarse hair to create the level of shine that you want. That's why a person with coarse hair could take like a serum and they could be a little more heavy handed with it and then they could flat iron their hair and it will look shiny and beautiful. Whereas somebody with fine hair could take that same amount of serum and be heavy handed with it and their hair is gonna be shiny but it's also gonna look a little greasy and it's gonna be very heavy. And that's because the same way the light has to bounce off those two surfaces, the product has to also respond to the surface. So if you have a smooth piece of hair like this and you put uh, like serum on it, you know, serum has a lot of silicone, it's real slick. It's just gonna create a, a smooth layer on top of that already smooth surface, right? So if you add a little, cool. If you add a lot, it's gonna start to weigh it down. Now, if you take the same strand and now just imagine there's little V's in here, little cutouts, and you put some serum on here, the serum is gonna, some of it's gonna go down into those grooves, some of it's gonna stay on the surface. What that means is that coarse hair with those grooves can stand more product before it looks way down and greasy because the product has more surface area that it can cover. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I also wanna say, just like the last video, um, coarse hair versus fine hair does not equal strength. Coarse hair does not mean that your hair is stronger than someone who has fine hair. The main point of strength or the main characteristic that can determine strength is porosity and that's gonna be the next video. So keep in mind that because somebody has a really full head of coarse hair does not automatically mean that their hair is stronger than someone who has um, fine hair. Okay, I wanna point out to you guys why it's important to know the difference and what some of these differences can mean for you when you're shopping. And the main thing I wanna focus on is uh, when you're shopping for tools, because I think tools kinda come into play a little more than products, because with products, you wanna focus more on density and thickness and porosity, and then you wanna just adjust the amounts you apply, depending on if your hair is coarse or fine. So a product can work for both hair types, It'll just be um, a difference in the amount you use on one head versus the other. Whereas with tools, one tool might not work on both those heads because you can't really, you know, adjust a tool. It is what it is. So the first thing I want to talk about are combs. A person with coarse hair, like I've said 9,000 times now in this video, <laughs> has grooves and different things going on in each strand of hair. So if you have a comb, where you know they make a comb with a mold so there's a bottom there's a bottom piece there's a top piece the liquid goes in there it's all heated up they close those two pieces together like this and then when it's solid they open it and then you take it out and boom that's your comb there's a seam where those top and bottom pieces come together like the line in my hand right here there's a seam and there is a process that companies use to smooth that seam out, but they don't focus on that necessarily. And I'm sure you've all had combs 
um, where you have had little snags in that seam, like it'll be here where you'll see a little snag. Those um, snags in that groove can cause a person with coarse hair to have weakened hair over time, more breakage than the next person. Because of those grooves in their strands, those things can get caught in there. Now it's not gonna be like, oh, you comb your hair with a bad comb, you have coarse hair and all your hair is gonna be in a comb. No, it's not that extreme. But like I say all the time, everything you do to your hair is cumulative. So if you're using a comb like that and it's snagging strands, snagging strands, snagging strands, over time, your hair will be less healthy <laughs> than it would be if you use a different type of comb. Now, somebody with fine hair who doesn't have things that can snag might not experience, probably won't experience the same type of uh, injury to their hair strands if they use a different type of comb. So, there are combs that are made specifically to be seamless. They are so smooth, it's like they're made out of glass is what it feels like. Those combs are better for somebody who has coarse hair. It just means over time your hair will be more healthy than it would be if you didn't take that route and take that extra little step. Not a huge deal, but it does matter. And if it matters to somebody, then they need to know that so they can make that choice when they buy their combs. The other thing that I think matters is flat irons. Um, when you're looking at the plate size of the flat iron, it does matter if you have coarse or smooth hair. Now. These things I'm gonna talk about have a lot to do with your wrap too, but they also have a lot to do with the type of hair that you have. I shouldn't say type, your hair's texture. Because, you know, some flat irons where the plates meet, it's really rough, it's not smooth, or there's a gap and your hair can get caught in there. Smooth hair can get caught in there, fine hair can get caught in there, but if you already have coarser hair, you're gonna be more prone to things like snags and pulls. So with that being said, say for instance, if you could take like a piece of hair and if you could use, um, just say you could use a half inch curler on this, but you could also use a one inch curler. I should say flat irons because I really hate curlers. So a one inch flat iron would work the same as a half inch flat iron would work. I would say if you have coarse hair, Go for the wider plate. Go ahead and get the one inch over the half inch because you're giving yourself more surface area, which means your hairs don't have to get as close to the end of that flat iron because there's more uh, surface area on the plate of the flat iron. Whereas if you have a you know more narrow plate, then there's more possibility for your hair to get caught in there. So that's just another tip. You don't have to do it. It's not major, but these are little tweaks that do play a part. And another point back to what I was saying earlier in comparison, if you have fine hair, be light-handed with your product, um, depending on the product. I use a lot of foam, I know that, I'm very heavy-handed with the foam, and there are times my hair is sticky and um, heavy and I have to do other things to kinda break down that mold. That's me, I know I shouldn't do that, I do that. but. You can use less product a lot of times if you have fine hair. Um, think about it, you have all these smooth strands next to one another. There's not friction in there, so they're all like kind of, you know, cohesive and playing nice together. So you don't need as much product. Um, where somebody, again, with coarse hair, there's gonna be a little friction in those little grooves, so they may require a little more product to get those hairs to actually be smooth, you know, and lay together like they want them to lay together. This is also important, ladies, like when you're doing your edges, you can have multiple textures of hair on the same head. So where your hair right here might be really, really coarse, your edges might be really, really fine. And I don't mean thin. I don't mean that there are fewer hairs right here. I mean the texture of the strands might be different on your edges, which would mean you might be heavy handed up here with the serum, but when you get ready to mold your edges and you're gonna use a gel or something that has more hold, you might wanna be very, very light handed on those finer strands of hair. So I hope that helped. I hope you guys took something away from it. I know people prefer the styling videos over the teaching videos, but I think the teaching videos are super important um, for your styles to come out and look nice like the styling videos. So it has its place. 
If you have any questions or comments or there's anything that I didn't describe clearly enough for you, please, please just leave it down in the comment section. I will get back to you. I will answer questions, um, reply to comments, all of those things. You know what? I want to tell y'all something too. Do y'all know that I just realized that like some comments, they be putting them in like spam on YouTube or like suspected spam. So most times I'm on my phone. So like when I'm replying to y'all comments, I'm just like replying to what I see on my phone pop up, right? Like as a comment or whatever, I can go into notifications and see it. So I just be replying on there. So the other day I'm on my laptop and I log in and I noticed that like, there's this whole section of comments under suspected spam. And I had to go in there and then when I went in, it's like, oh, you have to literally click approve for it to show. So if you've left me a comment or you've asked me a question and I didn't respond, just please know that that's why. Like I didn't know that there was this whole other like automatic spam junk that YouTube does. I shouldn't say junk because they probably got some reason for trying to capture certain things. It might be certain trigger words or whatever, but I did not know that. I did not know that. So don't take it as rudeness. Don't take it as me not getting back to you. And I sit here and I'm like constantly like, oh, I always get back to you guys. I do. Anybody in my comments like that comes up not spam, I get back to y'all. But I didn't know about that, so there was like a whole section. So I've cleaned it out, and now that I know, I'll look there too. Um, so it might be like a delayed response, like a couple days, but I'll get back to you too. So still go ahead and leave the comment. The other thing I wanna say is that my free webinar tomorrow is at 5.30 p.m. It's not too late for you to register. It's not too late for you to jump on board. If you want to, I'm gonna leave a link below. Just click the link. All you gotta leave is your first name, your email address, and whatever question you have for me about wrapping short hair at home like a pro. So with that being said, Thank you guys again for watching and subscribing and supporting. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And until next time, guys, bye.